Hello hockey fans, and welcome back to another video. Being selected in the first round of the NHL Entry Draft is a prestigious honour, but it doesn't guarantee a place in the best league in the world. Whether you're chosen first overall as the top player of your age group, taken somewhere in the middle of the pack during the teens, or selected towards the end of the round in the late 20s, each prospect has to impress their new team if they want to earn a spot on an NHL roster. When it comes to first rounders, who have spent most of their careers trying to make the jump to the bigs, one player that should immediately come to mind is Joshua Ho Sang. As a first round selection back in 2014, Ho Sang was seen as a high risk, high reward draft pick, who was just as likely to boom as he was to bust, thanks to his stellar offensive talent being coupled with some uninspiring defensive abilities. Unfortunately for both the player and the team that drafted him though, he looks to have become quite the bust in the seven years that have followed. So why hasn't he been able to make the jump to the NHL? Why has he been bouncing back and forth between the bigs and the minors more times than anyone can count over the last half a decade? Well in today's video, we're going to try and figure it out. So join me as we ask the question, what's happened to Josh Hosang? Before we begin, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is the number one provider of men's below the belt grooming, trusted by over 2 million customers worldwide thanks to their precision engineered tools that help you take care of what's down there. Let's be honest here lads, looking after your crown jewels is a pretty risky affair. But with Manscaped's new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0, you can rest easy knowing that your balls are in the best of hands. With a cutting edge ceramic blade, 90 minute battery life, waterproof technology and even an LED light, you never have to worry whether the lawnmower is up to the task. So all you have to do is focus on getting your junk exactly how you or your partner likes it. The folks at Manscaped recently sent me their Perfect Package 3.0 kit and I've been very impressed with the number of high quality products it provides. I've had this set for the last few weeks now, and I must say that I absolutely adore their ball deodorant. It has a gorgeous lavender smell to it, and if you use it after you shower, it leaves you feeling good and smelling great for the rest of the day. So if you want to get yourself some high quality male grooming products, help support the channel a little bit further, and shave 20% off your order plus free shipping, head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code oddmanrush. That's manscaped.com and promo code oddmanrush for 20% off your order plus free shipping. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. But anyway, back to the video. Let us begin by taking a look at Hosang's journey from his selection at the draft up until the time of this recording in order to understand why his career hasn't panned out in the way that anybody was hoping. We'll kick things off on June 27th, 2014, when Canadian winger Josh Hosang, who had spent the prior 13-14 season with the OHL's Windsor Spitfires and had scored an impressive 85 points in 67 games, was taken 28th overall at the NHL draft by the New York Islanders. Though he was considered to be one of the top prospects in the CHL that year, and while his skating, stick handling and vision rivalled many of the players taken in the top 10, the undersized forward was predicted to go somewhere in the latter half of the first round by several different draft rankings due to some notable concerns in his game. Not only were there inconsistencies in his effort from one shift to the next, and his defensive game was mediocre at best, Ho Sang had a tendency to let his emotions get the better of him when things weren't going his way. These outbursts caused him to commit a number of careless penalties in the heat of the moment, which would put his team at an unnecessary disadvantage and give their opponents the chance to shift the momentum in their favour. So although he was a gifted offensive talent whose scoring abilities could rival any other player at the draft, the rest of his game left a lot to be desired. Now if you thought his on-ice play was heavily scrutinised, wait until you hear what he had to say off it too. When interviewed before the draft, Ho Sang was so confident in his game and his individual ability that he believed he would be the best player of his draft class in three years time. Not only that, the youngster claimed that there were players ahead of him in the pre-draft rankings that were nowhere near him in skill level, and he took great pride in how his emotional responses might pose a problem for the hockey world, claiming most players are trained to hold in their emotions, whereas he does the exact opposite, especially when scoring goals. As you might expect, 
This confidence bordering on arrogance rubbed a lot of NHL scouts and general managers the wrong way. So much so that only 18 of the 30 teams chose to interview Ho Sang at the draft combine, with many of them wishing they hadn't by the time the interview was over. For example, Ho Sang's meeting with the Toronto Maple Leafs was rumoured to have ended less like an interview and more like a verbal assault, and the Leafs' director of player development, Jimmy Hughes, said that Josh needed to realise that the hockey world wouldn't conform to him. He would have to conform to it. Not only that, one GM claimed that his scouting staff would revolt if they picked Ho Sang at the event, and it was rumoured that several teams had the forward on a do not draft list. When asked about Ho Sang's confidence and outspoken personality after they had selected him, Islanders general manager Garth Snow joked that he'll fit right in with the organisation and that he knows what it's like to be a bit of a wildcard as they shit on me too. Certainly one of the funnier and more unique sound bites you'll hear from an entry draft, I'm sure. But anyway, having been taken late in the first round, Ho Sang would join the Islanders for their preseason training camp several months later and look to earn a spot on the team for the upcoming 14 15 NHL season. Though his efforts would be rewarded with a three year entry level contract on October 5th, 2014, the Canadian forward was unable to earn a spot on New York's opening night roster, as he was reassigned to Windsor shortly after camp ended for the entire year. The Canadian forward must have felt a little disappointed to have missed out on his NHL debut because his return to juniors saw him out for blood. The first round pick would notch 19 points in the first 11 games of the year before it was announced on November 14th, 2014 that he had been traded to the Niagara Ice Dogs. From there, Ho Sang would spend the rest of the year with his new team and continue to dominate his peers by potting 14 goals and 62 points in 49 games. This strong play would bring his full season totals to 17 goals and 81 points in just 60 regular season games. So although he had scored four less points than his draft year, he had done so in seven less games played. Sounds like a pretty good season to me, eh folks? As his third year in the OHL concluded, and with the 15-16 season on the horizon, Ho Sang returned to New York for his second training camp with the team in the hopes of impressing the coaching staff and cementing his place on their NHL roster. However, the forwards camp was somehow over before it even started. According to several reports, Ho Sang supposedly turned up late to the first day of camp as he didn't set an alarm and overslept, prompting Islanders general manager Garth Snow to bluntly tell him, enough with the bull, it's time to grow up, before reassigning him to Niagara just hours later. I hope those extra few winks were worth it, Josh. Having returned to the Ice Dogs for a fourth year in juniors, Ho Sang aimed to put his disappointing preseason behind him by continuing to rack up strong scoring numbers as an overager. Luckily for both him and the Ice Dogs, the former first round pick would get his wish, as he notched 19 goals and 82 points in 66 regular season games, with a further 26 points in 17 playoff games, helping Niagara reach the OHL playoff finals before falling in four games to the London Knights. Once his second year with Niagara was over and he was no longer eligible for the OHL, Ho Sang hoped that third time was the charm as he returned to the Islanders training camp and once again looked to book his place on their opening night roster. Though he would stick around for far longer than the year prior, the Canadian forward was once again unable to earn his spot in the bigs, instead beginning his first pro season with the Islanders AHL affiliate, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. That said, he wouldn't stay down there for the entire year. As the 16-17 AHL season got underway, Ho Sang took to the ice with Bridgeport and looked to get his first season in the minors off to a strong start. Thankfully, the 20-year-old forward would do exactly that, as he scored 10 goals and 36 points in 48 games midway through the year, including 20 points in his last 16 games. This impressive production not only ranked Ho Sang as one of the team's top scorers, it would also catch the eye of the Islanders' front office. Having seen his recent run of play, and with them curious to see if the now 21-year-old was ready to handle the bigs, Ho Sang would receive the greatest news of his career on March 1st, 2017. He had just been called up to the Islanders' roster, and would be making his NHL debut the following night. 
Despite getting his first shot to play in the best league in the world, Ho Sang would somehow add another controversy to his growing resume from the second he stepped out onto the ice. As he suited up in his debut game in the league, fans noticed that the Canadian forward was wearing the number 66 on the back of his jersey. This revelation drew immediate criticism from fans on social media, as the number had been iconically worn by league legend and Hall of Fame forward Mario Lemieux for the entirety of his storied career. In fact, Ho Sang was just the second player to have worn the number 66 since Lemieux had retired from the league back in 2006, the other being Calgary Flames defenseman TJ Brody during the 10-11 NHL season, though he would quickly change his number to 7 the following year. When asked why he chose the number 66, Ho Sang told reporters that he wanted to wear it as a tribute to Lemieux, both for his legendary career on the ice and the variety of incredible things he has also achieved off it too. That said, he would be willing to change it if he was asked, or if it began to cause too much of a distraction for his team. He also understood why Penguins fans wouldn't approve of his decision, since Lemieux had been such an icon in the city, but Ho Sang felt that everyone else around the league should get over it and not make such a big deal out of it, as their teams didn't have the same affiliation with the number. Lemieux himself was also asked about his thoughts on all this, to which he said that he had no problems with the youngster using his number, since other iconic numbers like 4 and 9 were still being used frequently around the league, despite them being worn by some of the best players the NHL has ever seen in Bobby Orr and Gordie Howe. Nevertheless, Ho Sang would keep the number 66 on the back of his jersey, take to the ice with the Islanders, and look to secure a more permanent place in the league. Though he would start his tenure off strong by scoring 7 points in his first 11 NHL games, the former first round pick would see himself quickly cool off, as he potted just 3 points in his next 10 games. Having racked up 4 goals and 10 points in 21 NHL games, the Islanders decided that it would be more beneficial for their young forward to spend the final few games of the season getting more ice time and playing a bigger role in the minors, so they reassigned him to Bridgeport right before the end of the year. As he returned to the AHL, the Canadian forward would end up going scoreless in his final two games, meaning he finished the season with 10 goals and 36 points in 50 AHL regular season games, good enough for 7th place on the team in scoring, despite playing noticeably less games than those around him. With his first pro season complete, and having combined a productive year in the minors with an impressive debut in the NHL, Ho Sang headed back to New York for another training camp, and aimed to finally earn a place on the opening night roster for the upcoming 17-18 season. Thanks to the lessons he had learned the year prior, and his overall game seeing notable improvement, the former first round pick would finally get it done on his fourth attempt, as he earned a spot on New York's roster as the season got underway. Though he would don an Islanders jersey to start the year, Ho Sang wouldn't stick around for very long, as he was reassigned to Bridgeport in late October after putting up four assists in his first six games of the year. After just two weeks in the minors though, the Canadian forward would return to New York's lineup in mid-November, but after notching a further eight points in 15 games, he was sent back down to the Sound Tigers in mid-December. Despite recording 12 points in 22 games during his two stints with the Islanders that year, Ho Sang would end up spending the rest of the season in the AHL, where he finished 6th on the team in scoring, with 8 goals and 31 points in 50 games. So even though he had recorded 22 points in his first 43 NHL games over the last two seasons, Ho Sang had been unable to earn a more permanent place on the Islanders roster. As the first man up when New York needed a player from the minors, the Canadian forward was right on the cusp of becoming a regular in the NHL, yet his overall game needed a little more refinement before New York would feel comfortable keeping him around for a full season. He may have been selected in the first round of the draft, but Ho Sang needed to earn his place just like everyone else, something the Islanders were hoping he could do by utilising top line minutes in the AHL as one of Bridgeport's go-to guys. Would he manage to achieve this goal? Well... As the 18-19 season approached, and Ho Sang took part in his fifth training camp with the Islanders, the Canadian forward would unfortunately take a huge step back compared to the year prior. Instead of joining New York in their opening game for the second straight year, Ho Sang would begin the season in the AHL, having been demoted to Bridgeport once again. 
Oh, and he was also asked to change his jersey number by New Islanders general manager Lou Lamorello, as he supposedly forbid any player from wearing a number above 35. So not only had he failed to make the Islanders lineup for their opening game of the season, he had also been stripped of his number 66. Talk about kicking a guy while he's down. Having been reassigned to the minors once again, the 23-year-old decided to vent his frustration by taking the scoreboard by storm. The former first-round pick would notch 22 points in his first 26 games of the season, giving the Islanders no choice but to give him another look on their roster, as they recalled him to the NHL on December 9th, 2018. Once he had returned to the bigs, however, Hosang would go ice cold seemingly in an instant. The forward would manage to produce just two points in his next 10 games before he was sent back down to the Sound Tigers once more. He would get another call-up in February of 2019 after being named Bridport Player of the Week, but after spending two games as a healthy scratch, he was demoted for the rest of the year. Now that's how you pour salt into an open wound, folks. Despite yet another return to the minors, Hosang would finish the year strong by potting 8 goals and 43 points in 56 AHL games, good enough to tie for 4th in team scoring, despite playing noticeably less games than those around him once again. Once his entry-level contract had finally come to an end almost half a decade after he signed it, the Islanders wanted to keep Hosang around for the following season, so he could continue to light it up for their AHL team if he was unable to finally make the jump to the NHL full-time. This mutual desire from both the player and the organisation to give it another shot culminated with a deal being announced on August 19th, 2019, as Ho Sang signed a one-year contract worth roughly $874,000 with the team. Unfortunately though, by the end of the season, Ho Sang's NHL career would go from seemingly inevitable to highly unlikely. The 2019-20 season would see Ho Sang go through the same old routine of joining the Islanders for their preseason training camp, looking to impress the team's coaching staff with his improved play and trying to earn a place on New York's opening night roster. However, for the second year in a row, the Canadian forward would be left bitterly disappointed, as he was once again demoted to the AHL before the season began on September 30th, 2019. Having just been sent back down to the minors once again, Ho Sang decided that enough was enough. Just three days after his reassignment on October 3rd, Islanders general manager Lou Lamorello announced that Josh Ho Sang had requested a trade from the organization via his agent. In order to try and accommodate his request as quickly as possible, the 24-year-old was asked to stay off the ice and not report to the Sound Tigers roster in order to ensure he remained healthy and put the team in the best position to facilitate a deal. Days soon turned to weeks, and the weeks quickly turned to months, but there was still no trade to be announced. After trying and failing to get a deal done during the first 10 weeks of the season, Ho Sang decided to bring his hiatus to an end and join Bridgeport's roster once again on December 17th, 2019. Though he would be given a clean slate by Lamorello and the animosity between player and organization would be left in the past, the Islanders GM made it clear that once Ho Sang joined the Sound Tigers, he would not be moved for the rest of the year a deal Ho Sang eventually agreed to as he was desperate to get back onto the ice and play hockey again. After rejoining Bridgeport's roster and scoring 10 points in his first 16 games of the year, in a surprise twist, the Islanders decided to loan Ho Sang to another team in the AHL, as he joined the San Antonio Rampage on February 28th, 2020. In fact, Ho Sang would spend the rest of the season with the St. Louis Blues minor league affiliate, where he scored three points in his final six games of the year to bring his full season totals to 13 points in 22 games. Once his one-year deal had expired, and having finished the season with another team's AHL squad, the Islanders were still willing to offer Ho Sang another contract and give him yet another opportunity to finally reach his potential, but the organisation was starting to run out of time and patience. Knowing that he had limited options elsewhere around the league, thanks to his limited playing time in the bigs and his lengthy stint off the ice waiting for a trade, the Canadian forward decided to stick around for a little while longer, as on October 27th, 2020, he signed another one-year contract with the team, this time worth $700,000. 
So just six years after he was drafted, Ho Sang had played less than a full season of hockey at the NHL level, had bounced between the bigs and the minors more times than anyone can count, and was deemed so expendable by his organisation that they were willing to loan him out to another AHL team by the end of the season. Not only that, he had just signed a league minimum contract for the first time in his career, and he was struggling to keep his position in the Islanders' depth chart secure, let alone make his long-awaited return to the best league in the world. And here I thought he was supposed to be the best player of his draft class three years later. Unfortunately though, things wouldn't get any better for him over the coming months. Despite signing his new one-year contract towards the end of October, the 2021 NHL season wouldn't get started for another three months due to all the complications brought about by the virus. Once the league finally got the ball rolling and teams began their training camps though, Ho Sang would be surprised to find himself off the list. On December 30th, 2020, it was revealed that Ho Sang had not been invited to the Islanders' training camp and was not expected to join the team when things got underway in early January 2021. Instead, it was expected that he would join Bridgeport for their training camp later on in the month. So after six consecutive years of attending the New York Islanders' preseason training camp, Josh Ho Sang had fallen so far down the depth chart and was considered such a non-factor in the organisation that he wasn't even given an invite to try and prove all of his doubters wrong. Gah, happy new year, Josh. Though he was expected to join the Sound Tigers later in January, Ho Sang decided to make his own plans for the year instead. On January 16th, 2021, it was announced that Josh Ho Sang would be heading to Europe in order to join Orboro IK of the Swedish Hockey League. The Islanders had agreed to loan him to Sweden for the rest of the year in order to give him a fresh start in a new city and give him a bigger role with more ice time across the pond, but keep him within the organisation should they require his services later in the year. So after parts of five seasons playing in the Islanders organisation, and seven years after he was drafted by the team, Josh Ho Sang had taken his talents overseas for the first time in his career, in the hopes of producing an impressive season in Europe, and catching the NHL's eye once his contract comes to an end. So now that we know what has happened to him, the next question is why? Why has Ho Sang been unable to earn a permanent place on an NHL roster over the last half a decade? Now some of you might be thinking that his attitude, or the several controversies he's been involved in over the years, might have been a cause in this, but I don't think that's the case. Having looked at his entire career up until this point, I think Ho Sang's lack of NHL success is due to two different factors. The first being that he was unable to refine his game to a point where the Islanders had no choice but to keep him in the NHL, and the second being that New York always seemed to have a better, more capable prospect that was able to make the jump in his place. Allow me to explain. Given that he has scored 24 points in 53 NHL games during his career, it's clear that Josh Ho Sang has been a pretty productive player whenever he's been given the opportunity to play with the Islanders, and there are a number of prospects that have gone on to play many years in the bigs who have produced at a much weaker scoring pace than him. However, Ho Sang's lack of refinement in the defensive side of his game and his continued ability to take unnecessary penalties that have plagued him since his draft year back in 2014 have never truly been fixed. Have they improved over the years? Yes, definitely. But during his 53-game stint in the bigs, Ho Sang is a minus four and has 20 penalty minutes to his name. Not the worst numbers in the world, of course, but combined with his point every two game scoring pace and his offensive production hasn't been strong enough to warrant keeping him around when his defense still has so many deficiencies. If Ho Sang had continued to score at closer to a point every game pace, if not higher, like he did when he first joined the team, then it would have been far easier for the Islanders to justify keeping him around despite his defensive liabilities. But the Canadian forward has unfortunately been stuck in no man's land as he has been unable to take either his offensive or his defensive game to the next level, rendering his performance in the NHL as passable at best and easily replaceable at worst. Speaking of easily replaceable, Ho Sang's inability to take the next step in his game has given other prospects in the Islanders organisation the opportunity to take his place in the NHL. 
Given the number of missed playoff berths and the high draft picks the Islanders received at the beginning of the 2010s, New York has been able to accumulate a number of high-quality, high-potential prospects over the years. With so many players and just a handful of roster spots available for them, every prospect has been competing against one another for the same one or two places on the team, meaning that each player has had to really stand out from the crowd and set themselves apart if they wanted to earn a place in the NHL. Since Hosang was never able to improve the weaker areas of his game enough or refine the stronger areas of his play even more, there was always a better, hungrier, more developed option in the pipeline that was able to leapfrog over Hosang in the depth chart and earn a place on New York's roster instead, leaving Hosang as the odd man out year after year. Couple that with Hosang's play somewhat stagnating over the last few years, and the longer he was competing for a job, the quicker the Islanders' gaze shifted towards the younger players in their organisation who seemed more likely to become the player he was supposed to back when they drafted him in 2014. So where does he go from here? Well, considering Ho Sang has now moved across the pond and will be spending the rest of the year in Sweden, his goal of making the NHL has been put on hold for the time being. That said, time is really starting to run out for him as he quickly approaches his 25th birthday, so he really needs to get his game figured out sooner rather than later, especially given how young the league has become over the last few years. Though the SHL season is well underway, and Ho Sang's loan was announced roughly a week ago, at the time of this recording, the forward has yet to suit up in his debut game with the team, likely due to him having to quarantine upon his arrival in Sweden. Once he does join the team though, he's hoping that Ho Sang can finish the year with a strong performance in Orboro, show the hockey world that his game is better than it's ever been before, and prove that he deserves another chance to crack the NHL. If he can't catch the Islanders' attention though, and he isn't handed another contract at the end of the year, his dream of making it to the bigs might officially be over, but that doesn't mean his hockey career is too. A strong season in Sweden could provide Ho Sang the opportunity to continue playing overseas in one of Europe's top leagues, and he can spend his mid to late 20s earning a decent chunk of change suiting up against the best players across the pond. So, will Ho Sang make another appearance in North America, or will he end up plying his trade overseas for the foreseeable future instead? I guess we'll have to wait and see, folks. And that was a look at what's happened to Josh Ho Sang. What do you guys think about Ho Sang's career up until this point? Do you think he can still make it to the NHL long term? Or do you think he'll have better luck overseas instead? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolness, Roman from London, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.